we're like really pumped about this and it's yeah. gonna sound funny because it's so basic but we're making a meatloaf which like I've never been excited to make <laughs> but there's like something about it being like a Disney meatloaf that is making me like super pumped so we're making in our book it's called cousin Anne's traditional meatloaf but I think currently it's called cousin Megan's I'm not quite sure why the name changed but it's from 50s primetime in Hollywood Studios super popular restaurant people love this restaurant when you go in like you sit at a table and it looks like an old 50s kitchen with like a tv playing like old shows from the 50s like sitcoms and your server is dressed up like 50s and it's supposed to feel like mom's cooking for you and that's what the whole menu is based off of it's yeah. like your mom's like comfort food so this meatloaf is from 50s prime time that's what it's called right yeah, yeah. Primetime Cafe, and like we want to go. We haven't been. So let us know. I'd like to check it out. Yeah, I, I heard just the whole overall experience is like amazing. Yeah. Um, and you know, even though they're kind of like basic recipes, well, it's, it's, that, it's that immersive experience. Yeah. You feel like you're in the 50s and then you're eating like mom's meatloaf yeah. or, you know. So it's on our list of things to try. Let us know if you've been there and if you liked it and what your experience was. Yeah. So let's get started on yep. Cousin Ann slash Megan's traditional meatloaf. <laughs> so the first thing it's telling us to do is um, we already have our celery, carrot, onion, dice, and that's supposed to be getting sauteed. So that's our first step. Yep. Let's go for it. I just need a little olive oil yep. in my pan. And the pan is already hot. It's already heated up. So while that's going, there um, we do have a couple like slight changes because we're doing keto, so we're not putting breadcrumbs in our recipe. So just you know, take a mental note of that. I'll upload the full recipe, but um, it calls for panko, and they're also doing ground beef and ground sausage. But we have like the meatball meatloaf mixture already, which is beef, veal, and pork. So that's what we're using. So I'm just stirring it around, making sure that it's sauteed nicely and softened. And I was just saying to Steve that it's funny because it's reminding me of my mom already. Like the smell of celery, carrot, like going reminds me of when she makes her stuffing. It's like this is what the whole house smells like when she's making stuffing. So it's like kind of cute because we're making like a meatloaf that is supposed to be like reminding you of your mom's kitchen. And like it's reminding me of my mom's kitchen already. All right, so our veggies have been sauteed. Our oven is preheated to 350. Next, it says if you have like the beef and sausage, you could mix that in the bowl, but ours already mixed, so that can just go in. And then um, it calls for an onion soup mix, but instead of just dumping this in there dry, it tells you to mix it with a quarter cup of hot water. So that's what I'm doing in a bowl separately, and I actually like, think that's really smart because sometimes that powder is like hard to mix in. And it gets like kind of clumpy and I feel like it doesn't distribute through the um, the meat well when I've used like soup packets and stuff before. So I really like this idea of mixing it with water. And it's going to um, make your, like add a little more moisture, I guess. I yeah. So while I'm doing this, you can start on the next thing. So it says to add the ketchup eggs and breadcrumbs, which we're not using breadcrumbs, salt and pepper. So you can start, and we're using um, this G Hughes ketchup because it is keto friendly. Um, so, of course, whatever ketchup you would normally use. So then everything's just going to get added in here and mix. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the vegetables. I've already added the eggs, salt, pepper, and ketchup. And then we add our onion soup mix and mix it all together. So I feel like this water gives like the little bits of onions. It doesn't leave them crunchy because usually yeah, they're crunchy. So it that, probably helps I really like them. that idea of like mixing it with water. I've never seen that in any other recipe. Like where they have soups, it's literally just like added in. But yeah. all right, so we're going to get that mixed up and then we'll put it in our loaf pan. And then it's baking time. Mm -mm.
All right, so our meatloaf is in the loaf pan. We're gonna cover it. Now this says to cook covered for one hour and then uncover and cook for another 30 minutes. I feel like it's not gonna take that long, but maybe it will. We're just gonna judge it. We'll let you know if the cooking time varies at all. All right, so our meatloaf is almost done. Um, I'm gonna make the sauce that goes on top. It's a very easy sauce. It's ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, um, Dijon mustard, and brown sugar. We're not gonna put the brown sugar in there. Uh, the ketchup that we use is sugar-free, but it's already got a pretty good sweetness to it, and I could add the erythritol um, or Swerve, which is a keto-friendly sweetener, and I just think it would be too much, so I'm not gonna do that. All you need is a quarter cup of ketchup. Quarter cup of ketchup. It's got a half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. So I'm just, just eyeballing this. Yeah, kind of eyeball it. A lot of mustard. Obviously, we will link, well, we will put pictures of the recipe. That's what we're doing. Right. What are they calling this? Like a tangy sauce or something? Uh, In that paragraph up top. Sweet and tangy sauce. Yeah. And then Worcestershire is also a tablespoon. So I'm going to just take the cap off of that. Mix it all up and warm it on your stove and that's it.